Hello, welcome to Room Now. I'm Janet Pope, a rheumatologist in Canada. And for those at ULAR 2021, bonjour, ça va. Uh, since ULAR was supposed to be in Paris, France. So I have a clinical question that I'm going to try to answer from some data at ULAR 2021. So my question is when I have a patient with systemic sclerosis, what does a limited cutaneous systemic sclerosis patient look like if they are SCL70 positive? I'm sure you're aware that SCL70 is also called topo or topo isomerase one, and that it is strongly related to interstitial lung disease. So poster 0318 used a large group of U-star, ULAR patients with systemic sclerosis to try to answer this question. So they wanted to look at organ involvement and changes between or differences between limited scleroderma with and without SCL70 and comparing diffuse to limited patients with SCL70. So they used a total of 1,052 patients with about seven to eight years of follow-up. They found that the limited patients who were SCL70 positive had shorter time from Raynaud's to the diagnosis of systemic sclerosis. Uh, we do know that patients with usual limited cutaneous systemic sclerosis usually have about eight or 10 years of Raynaud's before they get their first non raynaud symptom of their scleroderma, whereas in the diffuse patients, they often have about a year um, or get the first symptoms of systemic sclerosis at the same time as their Raynaud's. So shortening the difference kind of makes sense. They also compared SCL70 positive limited patients with scleroderma to anti-cardiolipin antibody. No surprise, they found more lung involvement if you were SCL70 positive and had limited scleroderma compared to centromere positive limited scleroderma. But here's the rub. When they compared SCL70 positive limited patients to SCL70 positive diffuse cutaneous subset patients, they found two interesting things. They found that the frequency of interstitial lung disease was absolutely the same in those two subsets. That might not surprise you because SCL70 is a risk for ILD. Here's where the take home message is. They found that if you had diffuse cutaneous systemic sclerosis, SCL70 positive, you were far more likely to progress your interstitial lung disease than if you were a limited patient with SCL70. Same frequency of lung disease, one has a poorer prognosis. And in fact, that correlated with mortality. Diffuse had higher mortality, SCL70 positive than the limited patients. This, however, shouldn't surprise me because a few years ago, we did a study with one of my trainees in our Canadian Scleroderma Research Group database, and we looked at a couple thousand patients who had had PFTs annually over three years. SCL70, no surprise, was related to restrictive lung disease, interstitial lung disease, restrictive pattern, but progression of ILD was far more related over the three years to having bad esophagus, esophagitis, so having need for a dilatation, aspiration, and choking. And if you had two or three of those things of need for a dilatation, choking, or even waking up with aspiration in your mouth, you are far more apt to progress your lung. Take home message, make sure our patients don't with ILD or at risk for ILD and scleroderma, don't eat after supper time, they raise the head of the bed and treat reflux very aggressively because it makes a difference for morbidity and mortality. Thank you and stay tuned for more.